We're so excited to be talking to the gambler himself, Mr. Kenny Rogers. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for being here. I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank now, you. You're doing this big concert, and I hear that it's the farewell. I don't want to believe that. You can. I know. Really? Okay, so this is it. Yeah, you know, I've had this pet peeve about guys that say goodbye ten times, <laughs> and they come back, you know, because... You always charge more money for your farewell shows, so they got the scam down. Okay. They say farewell ten times, and they keep charging more money for them. So that's not going to be the case. Not me. This is it. Talk to me about your career overall. You know, when when do you remember, Kenny, the moment where you thought, I've made it? You know, it's interesting because it, it, I was with the first edition, and we did the Ed Sullivan show. And I remember as a kid watching a nine-inch television with my mom and, and all of everybody around the neighborhood and us saying, boy, those are the stars. And we were doing the Ed Sullivan Show, and when I walked out on stage and he introduced us, I remember thinking, wow, we must have done something pretty cool. This is the moment all the way back then. In so many years, 60 years of making music, Tell me some of the highlights. Give me some of the stories that make you most proud. Well, I think that there's a lot of music that I'm proud of. Mm -hmm. I did some great duets with Dolly Parton, Dottie West, uh, Sheena Easton. You know, and that's one of my favorite duets I've ever done was We've Got Tonight. Yes. Oh, yes. And I do it on stage with Linda Davis. She's with me all my farewell to her. She sings great. Yes, she does. We love that lady. In being in the business, it ebbs and flows, and we see highs and lows in everyone's career. Was there a moment where you thought, all right, I'm about done before now? Did you think about getting out of the business? Ever? Not really, because I never had that kind of goals for myself, and I've said this on three or four interviews today, so Hopefully you won't be hearing it somewhere else. But <laughs> It's new to me. My mom had the most incredible way to express herself. And she only had a third grade education. But she really was very wise. And she told me, she said, son, be happy where you are. Never be content to be there. But if you're not happy where you are, you'll never be happy. And I think so when... I started and I had lows in my career. I just went, okay, I'm still making music. This is what I wanted to do. So she was incredibly wise about things like that. I know one of your hobbies was photography. What was it about taking pictures that helped you express yourself versus writing a song or, or being in music? How is it different? Well, you have to know I'm kind of an impulsive, obsessive which means I impulsively get involved with something and then I obsess with it to see how good I can get. Like I played tennis for about eight years okay. on the road and I finally developed a national ranking as a tennis player. And so I hurt myself and I knew I couldn't play anymore. So I got into photography. So I hired John Sexton who was Ansel Adams' assistant and he came out on the road with me and he taught me Ansel's 10 zone uh, black and white system and you know, you learn to do it right and you can get a great deal of response from it. Oh, that's fantastic. Tell me about the first time you met Dolly. The first time I met her, I did her television show here in town, but I don't think we met on that show. Really? Uh, no, we didn't and I was, I went on and it had been a long time and we had Islands in the Stream in LA and the, the guy that wrote it was there Barry Gibb, he was mm -hmm. producing me. And we sat there and we, I said, Barry, I don't even like this song anymore. He said, you know what, we need Dolly Parton. And I said, well, okay, I didn't really know her. And Ken Cragen was my manager. He said, I just saw her downstairs. I said, well, go get her. So we went down there and Dolly in her, her inimitable style came marching in the studio. And that song was never the same. So that was how it all happened. All right there, the stars just aligned. Yeah, and, and she, she gets a hold of a piece of music 
it takes on a life of its own. She's the only person I've ever met that could come in and sing a song as well the first time as the last time. You know, everybody else punches in and right. does stuff. She comes in and she sings it, and it's great. So good. Well, I got a chance to talk to her about a week ago, and I said, I know you're performing with Kenny at his farewell concert. And I said, is it bittersweet for you? And she said, well, you see, what you don't understand is Kenny's retiring from everybody else, but he will never retire from me, and I'll just show up at his house whenever <laughs> I want to. I hope so. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, we have a great friendly relationship. It's like Lionel Richie. It goes beyond music, you know. Uh, and I would never, she knows I would never ask her to do anything that I wouldn't do for her if she asked me. And consequently, we've lived like that for 30 years. And we've asked each other to do things that were important to us. And we've done them. So she's great. And I, I just love, I think my life is so much richer having known her. Absolutely. Let's talk about The Gambler. When this song came to you, did you have any clue that it would make the ripples that it did, that it would be a career song? No, I didn't. And I know that Johnny Cash recorded it the same day I did. Willie Nelson recorded it two or three days before. And somebody else recorded it within that week. And I recorded it, but Larry Butler was producing all of us. So I would have thought he would have been easier to deal with than that. But, you know, my record happened to hit the charts. And I think that, that we lived and died by charts at that uh, the, Right. And I was right, lucky, and I, I accept that. Looking at it now, it, do you feel like, obviously it's your signature song, but do you ever feel like you wanted something else to be your signature song? No. I mean, I'm very happy with that. I think the good news is, I think what happens is that song gave me a personality. It, people started calling me The Gambler. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I did five or six movies oh, yeah. as The Gambler. And uh, I, I, I just loved what it allowed me to do. And uh, I'm, I'm so glad that I did that song. And I thank Don Schlitz for that. Are you a gambler? No, you know why? Because I learned a long time ago, I can't win enough to excite me, but I can lose enough to depress me. So I, <laughs> so I just don't do it. You know, your your career is just so storied. So many amazing things that you've done in your lifetime. Is there something, Kenny, that you haven't done that you wish you would have or that you still want to do? Not really, or I don't think I would quit. I think that it's just, I've been so, I've done so much more than I ever dreamed I could, ever thought I should. And and it's been a great life and a great career, and I don't want to ruin it by hanging on too long. So you know, because a lot of guys do that. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. Best memory that you have that you think is probably the highlight of your career? Pretty much in the studio with Dolly, doing Islands in the Stream, or with Lionel doing Lady, mm. because those both are very rare moments. And Lionel, of course, he wrote the first verse. And I got to California and I was recording, and I finished the first verse, I'm looking for the lyrics, and I said, Lionel, where's the second lyric? And the second verse, and his, the guy that was in there with him said, he's in the bathroom writing it right now. No! So You're he wrote the second me. verse while I was standing. He has to have that pressure. Really? Yeah, he's, he's a very talented guy. Did you get a third? You were in the room. <laughs> yeah. He said, please, please. I was an inspiration. You were the inspiration. This is going to be such a celebration. All your friends are coming out. What are you most looking forward to celebrating the night of this fantastic send-off? Well, I think I'll be curious to hear what songs they choose and how they put their own slant on them. Okay. You know, because they do songs of mine, they're not going to do it like I did it. Mm -hmm. They're going to do something different with it. It's going to be a fun night. So advice for anybody new that's coming into Nashville that's trying to make it in this industry, what would you tell them? I say love what you do. 
Don't worry about success to start with. You have to get your foot in the door and then you have to be patient and be true to yourself. I think Chris Stapleton is a crazy example. He's been around for 20, 25 years. And because he is what he is, they discovered him. Right. He's a great talent. So good. You are a great talent, a great inspiration. We're just honored to talk to you. I thank you so much. Congratulations. Good to see you. Good to see Gotta you. Gotta get you some gloves. I, well, my hands are a little cold, but yeah. cold hands, warm heart. That's sure. That's right. Kenny Rogers, everybody. Warm hands, cold heart. <laughs>